Did you know that just by watching the videos on this channel, you are making the world a better place? That's right. Every video you watch helps bring high speed internet connectivity to remote communities around the world that are in need. Every view, like, comment and share counts towards making our goal of worldwide internet connectivity a reality. So please join us in our mission to connect the world by sharing our content and becoming a subscriber today because together we can make the world a better place. Hey everyone, welcome to my market commentary for the first quarter of 2023. The real story, well, we're starting to see cracks in the system as we saw Silicon Valley Bank fail along with Credit Suisse and some pressure in the financial markets. We will We'll be updating you on the latest shape of the yield curve, savings rates, other metrics, and our forecast for the next little while. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Joe Masick, a seasoned portfolio manager and investment advisor with IA Private Wealth, providing trusted guidance to investors for more than 23 years. Thank you for tuning in to Investing Made Simple, my YouTube channel, where you'll find reliable information to help you grow your net worth. In the first quarter of 2023, the Fed remained hawkish with two 25 basis point interest rate hikes in February and in March, bringing the range to 4.75% to 5%. The markets experienced a bear market rally in February only to retreat to January levels and then back up by March. Overnight, Silicon Valley Bank's failure triggered concerns about a recurrence of the Great Recession in 2009, and the yield curve continues to invert hard, reaching the deepest inversion I have ever witnessed in my career, with a spread of negative 142 basis points, a stunning figure. The Fed balance sheet increased due to the need to provide liquidity for bank failures, such as SVB, and we will, as usual, use all of this information to present the best best possible forecast for the next 12 to 18 months. But as always, before we get too deep into the video, I'd like to go through my usual disclaimer. If you have any questions surrounding your investments, please feel free to reach out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis as my contact details are now provided in the description below. The sharpest interest rate increase in decades led to absolute chaos in the banking sector for the first quarter of 2023. The Fed's commitment to rein in inflation is starting to have some serious effects. And as I stated in my market commentary in the first quarter of 2022, when it comes to the Fed, the prudent thing to do is assume the Fed will get it wrong, over tighten and cause recessions, and then provide too much stimulus and allow for too much growth. This means they will eventually invert the yield curve and cause a recession. I also mentioned that it would be unlikely for the Fed to achieve a soft landing and will be forced to choose between crushing the economy and the markets or crushing inflation. Right now, I believe the bond markets are telling the Fed that their current track is far too aggressive and their current rate hike trajectory will cause a recession. A number of very smart market participants believe, along with myself, that the Fed is in a no-win scenario. Raise rates to kill inflation, you risk a severe recession. Don't raise rates enough, you risk inflation continuing to rise and being a massive problem later. Many believe it's very unlikely that the Fed will achieve a soft landing, including myself. Silicon Valley Bank was the first casualty of the Fed's aggressive rate hikes. To explain what happened, I will be taking a small excerpt from one of the managers of one of the private equity funds we currently hold in one of our models. Justin Annis, Senior Portfolio Manager of the Lions Bay Fund Wheelhouse Capital Management. Now in this excerpt, he goes on to say, from what we know currently, and we acknowledge that new information may still come to light, this looks like a fairly straightforward failure in risk management, specifically related to concentration and correlation risks. This is not like MF Global or FTX, where bad actors were making bad bets with consumer deposits. This is just a bank that failed to appreciate it was structured as a one-way bet on interest rates. Silicon Valley Bank's first risk management failure was customer concentration. The vast majority of SIVB deposits and banking engagements were from high-growth, early-stage tech companies. SIVB enjoyed exponential growth while the 2020-2021 tech bubble was inflating, yet they never diversified. When the tech bubble burst in Q1 of 2022, it hit every aspect of their business. Their second risk management sin was underestimating correlation. SIVB deposits, banking business, and assets were all highly correlated to long-term interest rates. SVB's deposit base were almost entirely made up from the tech ecosystem, a sector whose valuation is directly 
tied to long-term interest rates. SVB then invested these deposits in long-term bonds, whose valuation is tied to long-term interest rates. If rates rise, their banking business slows, their deposits will decline, early stage companies burn a lot of cash, and the asset side of their business is invested in securities that lose money when interest rates rise. Imagine Barrick converting all of the cash on their balance sheet to gold bullion and then spending all future cash flow buying more gold bullion. I have a link to the full article in the description below. It should also be noted that the fallout from SVB led to the bank run on deposits on Signature Bank. The sudden move shocked executives of Signature Bank as waves of concern spread late last week. Signature customers moved deposits to bigger banks, including JP Morgan Chase and Citigroup. The failure of Credit Suisse also has to be mentioned here, as it is yet another bank that failed to properly manage their risks. Years of missteps finally led to the bank being sold to UBS. In April 2021, former Lloyds Banking Group CEO Antonio Horta Osorio was brought in to clean up the bank's culture after the string of scandals, announcing a new strategy in November. But in January of 2022, Horta Osorio was forced to resign after being found to have twice violated COVID-19 quarantine rules. He was replaced by UBS executive Axel Lehman. In February 2022, the bank faced some fresh scrutiny after leaked data purported to show it had served human rights abusers, corrupt politicians, and sanctioned businessmen for decades. Legacy compliance skeletons also continued to emerge from the closet. And in June 2022, Credit Suisse was found guilty in Switzerland's federal criminal court of failing to prevent an alleged Bulgarian cocaine trafficking gang from laundering profits via the bank between 2004 and 2008. Credit Suisse reported a full net year loss of 7.3 billion Swiss francs for 2022, predicting another substantial loss in 2023 before returning to profitability in 2024. Reports of liquidity concerns late in the year led to huge outflows of assets under management, which hit 110.5 billion Swiss francs in the fourth quarter. Now, as we enter 2023, the Federal Reserve remains resolute in its hawkish stance, declaring its willingness to take necessary measures to quell inflation. The notion of a smooth economic slowdown seems to have vanished, with most industry experts and myself believing that a recession is inevitable for this year. This has resulted in an extraordinarily swift inversion of the yield curve, the fastest I have witnessed in my career. From a peak of 227 basis points in May, the spread between the 10-year and the three-month yields has plunged to negative 142 basis points by March 30th, representing an astounding development in the bond market. The yield curve has been deeply inverted for over five months with no signs of changing increasing the likelihood of an impending recession by the end of the year. While we were already taking a defensive approach in our portfolios in the first quarter of last year, this drastic movement in the yield curve has prompted our office to officially be on recession watch starting October 18th, 2022 for a period of 24 months until October 18th, 2024, or a significant market decline, whichever comes first. The Fed's balance sheet had been shrinking steadily until late March when some regional banks experienced trouble. As evidenced by the SVB and signature crises, the balance sheet rollback was quickly reversed, and we are now at just over 8.7 trillion, up from just over 8.3 trillion. The pause in shadow hiking seems to be paused, at least for now. This is additional quantitative easing, which has to be factored in. Although the savings rate in the US has improved to 4.6% in February from a low of 2.7% in June, it remains below 5%, which still raises concerns about the US consumer's ability to purchase goods. In the near term, given the obstacles at hand and the fact that we follow the yield curve, we anticipate that the markets will persist in their downward trajectory through the first half of 2023. Nevertheless, there are several dynamic factors that could affect the forecast and we must keep a close eye on developments as they unfold. If you're an investor who has many years until retirement, you might find the upcoming 12 to 18 months to be exhilarating. With little invested capital, it is likely that you will experience frequent down days and market sales. If you've taken advantage of the dips over the last few quarters, continue to do so focusing on buying opportunities instead of short-term performance. During this bear market, you'll probably see some great deals on some outstanding companies coming up. Also, despite the possibility that there might be more sell-offs and deeper dips on the horizon, keep buying on red days and dips. It may be disheartening to see fresh money invested in the market time and again, but in the long run, you'll probably be glad you added as much money as you did. On the other hand, if you're nearing retirement 
retirement or in the early stages of retirement, this may be a more difficult time to navigate mentally and emotionally. With a significant amount of capital invested and no means to replenish that affected principal, you may want to prioritize preserving your capital at this point. If you've already reduced equity over the last few quarters, continue to do so during any market rallies and reevaluate your portfolio. If you have any volatile or high risk positions, you may want to consider reducing them and investing in alternatives with a proven track record during challenging times. Our clients have once again performed very well during this period and we have taken advantage of several opportunities this year to sell into rallies and safeguard capital in our discretionary portfolios. By adding additional holdings to our alternative and private equity sleeves, we have seen lower volatility and better risk adjusted returns over the last little while. Well that's it for this quarter and once again I want to thank you for joining me here today. Until next time, this is Joe Masick for Investing Made Simple. See you soon.